All right, so let's talk about generic UI for ASP.NET Core. It's not often that we get to introduce you to a brand new product suite, and we had that pleasure with our R3 release. Now, before we start talking about what this product is, I think we need to take a small step back and understand where this fits. And for that, we need to look into the directions that we are seeing with .NET and ASP.NET. Now, for the longest time, the .NET framework as we know it has been one giant monolithic framework on which all your free applications run on. Now, that doesn't need to be the only way forward. While you can still run the full .NET framework, there is a new kid on the block, and that's .NET Core. And this is where a lot of the exciting things are happening. The new .NET Core is lean, it's modular, and it is cross-platform. So for the first time, your .NET applications can run not only on Windows, but also natively on Mac and Linux. You're seeing a resurgence of some of the command line tooling, which is common between all platforms, and .NET really lowers the barrier to entry so that anybody could get started with the new .NET Core. Now, for all things .NET, you can start at http.net, which is going to show you all the different flavors of .NET, the full .NET framework, the .NET Core, Mono, and other base class libraries. So you might say there are quite a few .NETs now, and that's not a bad thing. Eventually, you'll see a consolidation of efforts, and you'll see a lot more unification with the API contracts with .NET standard. It is an exciting time to be a .NET developer. So let's talk about the bigger 10,000 feet .NET picture. As you can see, there are quite a few .NETs now. There is the full .NET framework on which all of your applications can keep running as they are today. This includes all of your desktop, web, and mobile applications, and you have the entire API canvas to run your applications. Then there's the new .NET Core, which we talked about is lean, it's modular, you only get to pick and choose the pieces that you want for your application, and it's cross-platform. And you can see UWP, ASP.NET Core, and console applications starting to use .NET Core. And then there's Xamarin, which is an acquisition Microsoft made earlier this year, which I think really completes the .NET story. With Xamarin, you can write C Sharp and XAML towards making truly native cross-platform apps for iOS, Android, Mac, and other platforms. And all of that is running over a port of .NET called Mono. So as you can see, with the new .NET, you have a lot of flexibility. Not only can you target apps that run on any platform, you can also build all of these applications on any platform with the right cross-platform tools. Now, this is just the beginning for the new .NET. And I think over time, you're going to see something called the .NET Standards Library gain prominence. What this allows you to do is have a consistent API contract for all .NET applications, and it offers the ultimate portability. So if you do not have device-specific code, there is no reason why a portable class library that you built for Xamarin cannot be consumed in an ASP.NET application, and vice versa. Pretty exciting stuff, right? So that's a high-level overview of some of the changes that are going on with the new .NET. All right, so now let's take a look at what's going on in the ASP.NET land. And as we move forward, there's a small fork in the road. ASP.NET, as you know it, is a pretty matured web development platform, and the next iteration of that is ASP.NET 4.6. Now, this runs on the entire .NET framework, which is 4.6, just as it does today. The new kid on the block is ASP.NET Core 1.0. And just like the .NET Core framework on which it runs, the new ASP.NET Core is written from ground up. It is lean, it is modular, and for the first time, it is truly open source and cross-platform. Not only does it run on every platform, but it gives you the developer tools and lowers the barrier to entry so that you can develop ASP.NET applications on any platform. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, with all of this context of .NET and ASP.NET behind us, now let's talk about the Telerik ASP.NET suites, and hopefully it'll make much more sense as to where things are headed. So we have always had two hugely popular ASP.NET suites, UI for ASP.NET AJAX for web forms applications and UI for ASP.NET MVC for MVC applications. And these two will continue to evolve, but they're meant for Windows developers inside of Visual Studio. And they're meant for applications that run on the entire .NET framework, that is .NET 4.x. Now, we are pretty excited to announce our brand new product suite, Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core, which, as the name suggests, is meant for ASP.NET Core applications that run on .NET Core. Now, both UI for ASP.NET MVC and UI for ASP.NET Core are powered by Kendo UI, which is our front-end JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS framework. So in both product suites, you get 70 plus polished UI widgets. They're just meant for different .NET runtimes. Now, you guys already know how to leverage our ASP.NET controls from inside of Visual Studio. Download the bits, reference them in your project, or bring them in through NuGet. But with UI for ASP.NET Core, you could optionally step outside of Visual Studio and do your development on other platforms, which makes things interesting. So, enough talking, right? Let's jump into a quick demo. 
So I'm on my Mac here, building an ASP.NET Core application outside of Visual Studio. Here's the product page where you can get started with the UI for ASP.NET Core. Now you'll notice that in my Finder window, I have a folder where I have started a Telerik ASP.NET Core application. Now the structure of the files and folders in this scaffolded project is almost identical to what you will get when you do file new project inside of Visual Studio. When on other platforms, you simply use the terminal, which works consistently everywhere else. So I could simply say .NET new minus T of the type and then web to scaffold a new ASP.NET application. Alternatively, I could simply use the ASP.NET Yoman generator by saying yo ASP.NET. And both of these things will scaffold the same exact project for me. Now, since I already have the project, let me open this up in Visual Studio Code. Now, there are a couple of things I need to do to light up Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core in this application. First, in my project.json file, which lists out all of my project's dependencies, in my dependencies section, I'm simply going to say use Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core and mention a specific version number. Next up, in my startup.cs, which is how my application bootstraps itself, I'm going to find the configure services method and say services.addkendo. And further down in my configure method, I'm just going to say, let this app use Kendo. And that's all it takes. Now, you'll notice that in the www root folder, which is where a lot of my static stuff lives, I do have references to all of the Kendo UI bits, the CSS and the JavaScript. You can do this manually by just dropping the references in your folder, or you can go ahead and update your bower.json file to add a dependency for Kendo UI. Now, these steps are going to be essentially the same, whether you do this inside of Visual Studio Code on a Mac or Linux, or whether you do it inside of Visual Studio in Windows. Essentially, this is what you need to do to set up UI for ASP.NET Core for your application. So beyond this point, it should be pretty boilerplate stuff. So in my view imports.cshtml, I can just do a global at using Kendo MVC UI. So I have it for the entire application. Then in my layout CSHTML in my shared view directory, which is kind of like a master page, I'm referencing all of the CSS for Kendo UI. And then finally, I'm referencing the Kendo UI min.js and then Kendo ASP.NET MVC.js. That's going to be all of the stuff that I need to use uh, the MVC controls in all of my pages. So in my home and index.cshtml, which is where my application starts up, there is some boilerplate stuff, but then I can do at HTML Kendo date picker. So this is essentially a razor syntax that renders an MVC date picker. You could also use some of the new tag helpers that we have for several widgets inside of UI for ASP.NET Core. So with my code changes in place, let me go back to my terminal and simply say .NET restore, just to pull down any other references that I'm missing in my project. And now that it's done, I can say .NET run to actually fire up my application. It says application started. So now let's go to our browser and we're going to say localhost 5000, which is where it runs. And here we have it, a native ASP.NET Core application running on a Mac, which is a beautiful thing. But then if you scroll down, this is the index page in my home view. Here's the Kenda UI date picker. And this is essentially a true Kenda UI MVC date picker with full interactivity, just as you expect. Now, this was a real quick demo to show a single widget in action, but hopefully you see the promise. Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core is here to light up all of your ASP.NET Core applications with polished UI. Use it from inside of Visual Studio on Windows or any text editor on Mac or Linux. Hope this was fun.